What's up, fellas? So that was the physique update, about 10 pounds heavier than the last time I did it. Gaines Goblin freaking ass when I came back inside. She was like, well, did the physique update come out good? And I said, what kind of question is that? Of course it did, I'm fucking Jack. Anyway, GTA stats breakdown. So of course my height has not changed, I'm five foot 11. Quick little, just aside by the way, I could have either been born short or an inch taller and actually been six feet tall, but alas, I am five foot 11. If I was like short, I would look massive at 205 pounds, which is my current weight. Body fat percentage is probably around 15%. I have very, very visible abs and washed out lighting. So I'm definitely lean, but I also know that I'm carrying a, a few extra LBs as well. Now in terms of the arm circumference, my bigger arm is 18 inches. My smaller one is over 17 and a half. Legs are plus or minus 27 and a half inches. So one is a little bit bigger, one's a little bit smaller. The waist, which is you know mostly what I pay attention to, is 32 inches. And then my neck flexed is around 19 inches. And making this video today because I wanna make one of those old school Ball Romney Man videos where we just chop it up, talk about training, talk about a little philosophy, whatever I feel like talking about. So I'm gonna go to the gym in a second. We're gonna talk about seven life lessons that I've learned from talking to guys and gals at the gym that have improved me as a person that I just wanna impart to y'all. We'll talk training, everything I'm doing as well. But two bonus lessons before we go to the gym, which I guess would make this nine, but seven sounded better in the title, fellas. One, have a notebook. I'm actually gonna go grab mine real quick. You wanna have a notebook, whether that's the games book like I got here, I like physical note taking, or if you're someone like the many people that enjoy my free programs on Boost Camp, you have that. But more importantly, dude, you wanna take detailed notes during and in the middle of your session, like when you're resting and things like that, because it helps infer what went wrong, what went good, what you need to change, what you can keep the same as a staple. So like, for example, looking in the gains book, the anabolic tome of muscular mass uh, last session before this one, clean pulls, roidy, RDLs, roidy, positioning felt very strong. Obviously, my clean pulls and my RDLs felt very strong that day. However, the session before that, it said, although bench was roidy, pecs and triceps feel a bit fatigued. Meaning, coming into the session, my pecs and triceps were just a bit tender from the session that I had before that. So, again, it helps you project the future of your program, and also take a close look at what's working really well. All right, enough talking, boys. I'm gonna get some food in my belly and then we're gonna head to the gym. I sense some freaking juicy PRs coming while we talk about the seven life lessons. So I'm gonna head out, I'll meet y'all there. All right, fellas, seven life lessons that I learned from fellas at the gym. Now you may be wondering first and foremost, well, why are you wearing a do-rag? Well, simple explanation. All the Chad bodybuilders of the past used to go to the gym in fucking overalls and gardening gloves. So I'm going to wear a do-rag because I think it looks cool. And at some point in my life, I had waves. Anyway, things that actually do require an explanation. Lesson number one. I learned this from my boy T. It's real simple, real good relationship tidbit. Just call your old lady and tell her how long you're going to be so she doesn't call you in the middle of what you're doing and mess up your flow. All right, I'm going to try to get 10 reps. Hopefully you don't shit the bed. I used to shit the bed a lot when I was young. <sighs> Fellas, that was satire. At no point have I ever, you know, soiled myself on accident. Like I, I have, I've been potty trained. All right. So anyway, about the training, I'm doing bandit bench right now as like a light third bench day, just 80 pound band, I think, and a million sets of four. And then I follow that up with weighted pull-ups two movements that I've been training for strength right now. I think I'm in the middle of my cycle for both. I got nine reps. In my book, I didn't shit the bed. It was just, you know, starting to come out a little bit, but it didn't touch the fucking sheet, all right? I didn't get 10 reps, bro, but it was still a PR. It is what it is. And with that in mind, next lesson, lesson number two, slow gravy is better than no gravy, baby, at the end of the day. And in other words, that means have drive. Drive is an, an innate quality. It's something that you either have and determination at the end of the day is what's gonna separate you from people that are just as good as you or sometimes a little bit better. Actually, shortly before this set, I called the goblin and informed her that I'd be at the gym a little bit longer since I had a call just so she wouldn't worry. Right here, I'm just hitting a 20 repper set, just kind of as like a pre-exhaust before I go into a working set so I can keep the weight down on my extensions. 
And this leads us into our next lesson, dude. I've been doing this particular exercise for a long time. Lesson number three, dance with the girl that brought you to the dance, bro. What kind of douchebag goes to the dance with a chica and then picks to dance with another girl? That's like, it's exactly like changing your exercises all the time. So I keep in similar movements for as long as possible. And that can be for months on end, bro. I just adjust the parameters in which I do them sometimes, but I'm keeping select movements in to get better at. And that's what allows me to have good year over year progress. I'm convinced. I'm sure it'll all work out at the end of the day, bro, which actually segues really nicely into the next lesson that I had in mind. I've always had a I'm always going to make it home at the end of the day kind of mindset. In other words, I always envision success for myself and favorable outcomes. I've always kind of knew this innately, but in the process of training, training is very meditative. I was able to put specific words to something that I've always carried with me, and especially through the military shit jobs and, of course, through training. I always visualized getting home safely getting home on time, not having to do overtime at the shit jobs, hitting PRs, and in terms of exercising as well, connecting really well with my exercises and being mindful. This superset is a variation of a superset that I've seen every jacked and strong person at this gym, gyms that I've trained at on the internet. It's something that I've all seen them use. Now, they all have their exercises of choice, but it's pretty similar across the board. And that's the next lesson, fellas. Success leaves clues. Sometimes these clues are of the anabolic variety, but a lot of times when you see someone killing it, like really killing it, it's immediately evident in something that they're doing, like you can observe. You don't observe someone sticking a needle in their arm, but you can, for example, see that they're really nailing their nutrition. They're nailing visualization. They're focused on their training. And for example, my buddy Sam recently benched 600 pounds. Like I said, he nailed the nutrition. He nailed the visualization. He formulated a three times a week bench program with variations that really worked well for him and a simple, repeatable setup with workouts that he executed flawlessly. And it inspired me to formulate my own three times per week template that I'm going to be talking about in another video soon. So all credit goes to him for that. Next lesson is going to sound crazy. And I learned this from... We'll call him Big J. I met him at the gym. Big 40-year-old dude, same height as me. But he's a top heavy 225. Natural bench is 450. His thing is that he trains with men younger than him who are still in their prime because it helps him push himself. But he's not necessarily, he's cordial and cool with them, but they're not his age. He's not like friends with them, if that makes sense. He started lifting in his 30s for reference. And what this says to me is, is that sometimes you can't train with your friends, bro, because I'll tell you what, when I train with my friends, we end up shooting the shit and talking and spending way too much time in the gym. So the lesson is, is that if you're going to have training partners, you got to train with people that will actually push you to your limits or just don't bother. Train alone. It's funny I said don't work out with your friends, bro, because I learned this particular lateral raise variation from training with my friends because we would always train shoulders like back to back to back like circuit style and i really like it because it feels smoother than a regular lateral raise but of course we got to train the neck as well lateral raise hits the neck a little bit but of course you have to hit it directly which you don't hit directly you can't expect to grow maximally it is what it is if you're someone that can get really big biceps from chin-ups good for you have a fucking cookie that's not everybody not everybody's gonna get 17 18 19 20 inch arms by doing chin-ups by doing a back exercise that being said though bro i really didn't feel like training my neck i'm gonna just keep it a green bean with you bro by the time i got to my neck work i'm like am i gonna skip it and then i remember how you do small things is how you do all things i just made a freaking video talking about that so i didn't skip it it's not because i'm getting lazy on it per se it's just because I found out that my neck just swells up so easily from training it that when I was training it every day, it was good because it was I was making a habit out of it. Now that I've fallen out of that habit of doing it every day and just two or three times a week, it's like when I do get to it, it's like, fuck. But, you know, we're still growing nicely from it. I just I'm not doing it as often because I don't need to. 
I used to get real antsy <laughs> training my neck in public. I'm not gonna lie, bro, because the shit looked funny. Uh, I made a meme saying it was like uh, soy jack. Well, that looks fucking crazy training your neck. Blah blah blah. And then uh, the Chad was like, you know what's fucking crazy? How fucking jacked I am. <laughs> and that's kind of how I think about it in my head. You know, all jokes aside, it's like a funny little, oh, well, this is why I'm doing it kind of thing. And then when you talk to people about it and you're fucking jacked and pers personable and have social skills and shit, they're like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Blah, blah, blah. And it's like a fun little thing to talk about. Speaking of seeing people do things, this ties into the last lesson, lesson number seven. If you see someone do something that you've never done before, that's extraordinary, that doesn't look real, it's more than likely possible for you as well, given enough time and practice and repetition with doing the right things, and also provided that y'all have a similar starting point. It's as simple as that, bro. If you see it, you can achieve it. That's it, fellas. Short and sweet seven lessons that I've learned at the gym. Training is a beautiful thing. It's, it's followed me at every stage in my life through thick and thin. That's why... I go out of my way to educate and to share what I love with people. Now, I'm leaving off with some forearm isolation. Really, really like this exercise. It's really chatty. It feels good. It gives me a great pump. I do it uh, two or three times a week. But if y'all like this type of video, you let me know. If you have any questions, you let me know as well. Y'all go ahead and watch the videos that are on whatever corner of the screen they're on at the end of the video. I'm never sure where they actually land at. But... I'll see y'all in the next one. Have a good day.